Hello everyone. In the last class of application of thermodynamics, the entropy of mixing ideal gases, this topic was discussed. Now, our today's topic is free energy of mixing ideal gases. So, if two or more ideal gases are mixed with each other, then what should be the change in its free energy? That is in the value of mu. Okay. So suppose so we have i number of ideal gases each at temperature T and pressure P who have their chemical potentials at pure states before mixing are mu i star equals to mu i zero plus RT ln P. This is actually common expression for any ith component of gas its chemical potential before mixing okay when it was at pure state. So this star this asterisk sign uh, actually indicating the pure state of that particular substance here the ideal gas okay mu i0 is the its standard chemical potential while its temperature is t and pressure is p okay now if these ideal gases are mixed then the chemical potential of the ith component within the mix mixture after mixing what becomes if this uh, what happens if this ideal gas or if the ith component of gas is mixed what mixed with some other component of the gas okay then what should be its chemical potential within the mixture its chemical potential within the mixture should be mu i so this mu i star is the chemical potential at pure state before mixing and this is the chemical potential uh, within the mixture after mixing okay but the main characteristics of the gas of the of the substance is actually mu i0 which is the standard chemical potential which is a constant would which would never change okay so mu i0 is always the same but here instead of pressure capital p you are writing here small p i that means this is the partial pressure of the ith component that means if some gases gas is present if some gas component is present within a mixture then it's uh, partial pressure must be written in small letter because it is not actually contributing towards the overall pressure P. It, is, it has some partial contribution towards the pressure. So it may be P1, it may be P2, P3, etc. And the overall pressure P is actually P1 plus P2 plus dot 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 plus PI. So this PI is the general term of the pressure of the component gas within the mixture. Okay, so mu i is nothing but mu i zero plus R T L N P i. This p is small lettered p. And we know, as we know, that if the total pressure is capital P, and if the partial pressure is small letter p i, then the ratio is nothing but its mole fraction. So small p i by capital P. That means the partial pressure of in the individual gas over the overall pressure of the mm, mixture. Or the total gas capital P is actually the mole fraction of the ith component. So instead of PI, we are writing here XI into capital P. Just cross multiply, move this capital P from the denominator to the right hand side. So it becomes XI into capital P. Okay. Now we are expanding this logarithm series as RT, RT ln XI plus RT ln P. So in the right hand side we are getting here three terms mu i0 plus rt ln p capital p plus rt ln xi and instead of mu i0 rt ln p this is nothing but mu i star in equation one these two parts are nothing but the uh, 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 right hand side of equation one so instead of this we can write the single term in the right, left hand side of equation one which is actually mu star mu i star so instead of these two we are writing here mu i star plus rt ln xi okay so and we have mentioned it here that mu i zero plus rt ln capital p is mu i star thus we get equation number two therefore the difference between mu and mu i and mu i star is actually rt ln xi so this is the difference between these two difference between difference between what Difference between the chemical potential of the component gas within the mixture and the chemical potential of the component gas when not in mixture. This is the difference. Okay, that means the final chemical potential minus the initial chemical potential. 
that is the change in chemical potential okay so this is actually the left hand side actually means the change in chemical potential due to mixing of that gas component so now under the same total pressure p and temperature t different amount of gas such gases n1 n2 n3 etc moles are mixed up each component of gas gases has mole fractions as usual x1 x2 x3 etc respectively the molar free energies of this component before mixing were mu1 star mu2 star mu3 star etc okay so just we are just imposing going to imposing this equation on different components of the gases it may be the component number one component number two three dot dot, dot i etc okay and similarly the molar free energies of this uh, component gases after mixing that means within the mixture okay their uh, chemi uh, chemical uh, their chemical potentials becoming mu1 mu2 mu3 etc okay so we can just put this equation this equation number three okay then the total initial free energy of the component gases before mixing can be expressed as g initial as just simply mu1 star plus mu2 star plus mu3 star but since they are not present in just one mole they may be present in n1 n2 n3 etc moles so their chemical potentials are multiplied by their respective number of moles to get their individual chemical put in, uh, free energies so this is the free energy overall free energy of the component number one first component of the gas before mixing this is the free energy of the component number two before mixing and so on thus we get equation number four and the total free energy of the component gases after mixing so we are getting here the mu i just simple mu term okay simple mu1 plus mu2 plus mu3 but since they are present not in one mole but in n1 plus n1 n2 n3 dot 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 etc moles so this corresponding or respective number of moles have been uh, multi multiplied with the respective chemical potential to get the free energy of the mixture so this is the free energy of the mixture and this is the free energy of the uh, gas components before mixing so this is final state this is initial state so therefore what should be the difference the difference is the change in free energy and that is our uh, our destination today there would we would like to arrive today so delta g mix that is free energy of mixing ideal gases what should it be the final free energy minus the initial free energy final free energy is actually the free energy within the mixture and in the initial free energy is the free energy before mixing the gases that is nothing but g initial that is the left hand side of equation 5 minus left hand side of equation 4 so definitely the right hand side of equation 5 must be subtracted by the right hand side of equation 4 instead of these two therefore delta g mix is nothing but this one minus this one simply n1 is taken common so it becomes mu1 minus mu1 star n2 is taken common so it simply become mu2 minus mu2 star and so on thus we get equation number six and already we have in equation number three the expression of mu minus mu i minus mu i star okay and that is nothing but rt ln xi isn't it so we have just rewritten here equation number three for your convenience that what was in equation number three it was mu i minus mu i star equals to rt ln xi isn't it so we have put this value okay we have to take the help of this relationship and thus equation six becomes this just instead of mu1 minus mu2 star mu1 minus mu1 star we can write rt ln x1 instead of mu2 minus mu2 star we are writing here rt ln x2 and so on so this is the free energy of mixing now let us just uh, proceed this mathematically to give it a simpler form okay how just in the next step just rt is taken constant so n1 ln x1 within the bracket plus dot 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 i'm not repeating them now uh, just dividing um, both sides dividing not both sides actually multiplying the numerator and denominator by n n is the total number of moles it is actually summation of ni okay so in the numerator you can write nrt or in the denominator you can also uh, uh, put or place n in all the terms okay so here nrt then 
instead of n1 you are writing n1 by n instead of n2 you are writing n2 by n what is our intention to do this or just our intention to do this to get the mole fraction expression here again okay this is nothing but x1 this is nothing but x2 this is nothing but x3 and so on so in the next line we are writing instead of n1 by n x1 instead of n2 by n x2 instead of n3 by n x3 okay and we have to mention this as n1 by n equal to x1 and etc okay so we have finally how you can express this uh, by taking the summation uh, sign you can write them okay delta g of mixing nrt sum over i xi ln xi isn't it this term has been written as the summation and this is equation number seven and this is our destination okay so we have arrived at the equation where delta g of mixing uh, is uh, just calculated out okay and so the free energy increases or decreases in a gas mixture this is the next question do you what do you think now look similarly as you did in case of free energy of uh, and sorry uh, uh, entropy mix, uh, change in entropy due to mixing ideal gases what was the expression minus nr sum over i xi ln xy that was the expression now so that was the negative sign and since xi is a fraction so ln xi is a negative sign and the negative negative became positive so delta s was positive so similarly delta g must be negative here because xi is is a fraction it's less than one so ln xi is a negative term and hence overall since this is a positive so overall this is a negative term so delta g mix is negative that means it is decreasing okay so we have to find the value of delta g in case of binary gas mixture that is in case of i we have just we are going to just put one and two okay so this is our equation number seven this is the final expression and proceed just as you did in case of uh, in entropy okay entropy of mixing ideal gases so for a binary gaseous mixture this equation can be written as i first time one and second time two so it just become x1 ln x1 plus x2 ln x2 okay so nrt uh, is taken common x1 ln x1 and x2 ln x2 this is the mix for a binary mixture now we know that x1 plus x2 equals to 1 so x2 must be equal to 1 minus x1 so instead of x2 we are writing here 1 minus x2 the same way okay the same approach 1 minus x, x1 instead of x2 here also now therefore delta g mix would be either maximum or minimum if the differentiation is 0 okay so let's differentiate with respect to x1 so if you differentiate with respect to x1 then um, the right hand side must be 0 to get its maximum or minimum value so let's proceed partial differentiation with respect to x1 of the right hand side must be equal to the differentiation of this term this is actually the right hand side of the previous equation okay and here nrt term has been just uh, vanished abolished here nrt term because nrt is not equal to zero since in the right hand side there is zero so nrt has been uh, just taken out from there or just differentiate them the same procedure okay this one constant differentiation of this one resulting in this term then ln x1 constant differentiation of x1 resulting in ln x1 into 1 plus 1 minus x1 constant differentiation of ln 1 minus x1 this is the result then ln 1 minus x1 constant differentiation of 1 minus x1 that is minus 1 that is equals to 0 okay and here uh, okay one suffix to one is not written here this is a typing error just make the correction it should be ln x1 okay now this is one so one this is ln x1 so ln x1 this is minus one so minus one and this is minus ln 1 minus x1 so minus ln 1 minus x1 equals to zero and this one is cancelled by this one 
So it these two combination of these two terms become ln x1 over 1 minus x1. This is equal to 0. Now if this is equal to 0, then x1 minus 1 minus x1 by 1 minus x1 must be equal to 1 because log of 1 is always 0. It may be base 10 log or it may be natural log, whatever it is. Okay. So it must be 1. That means x1 is equal to 1 minus x1. Okay. And therefore, uh, x1 equal to half and x2 therefore x2 is also equal to half isn't it so at 1 is to 1 ratio they are either maximum or minimum now we have to find out what whether what is whether it is maximum or minimum so it is we have to double differentiate this in order to do this just take the double differentiation and uh, after doing the double differentiation you are getting this result what is the result in the right hand side you got ln x1 by 1 minus x1 so differentiate. So first of all, we have to differentiate this term, which is in the right hand side of log. So differentiation of this term should be reciprocal of this term. So the reciprocal is 1 minus x1 by x1. Now again differentiate x1 by 1 minus x1, isn't it? So that is the actually either the rule of uh, uh, x by y, differentiation of x by y or x into 1 by y. So I am just following the rule x into 1 by y. Okay. So x1 constant differentiation of 1 by 1 minus x1. And then 1 by 1 minus x1 constant differentiation of x1. So these two are written here. Now in the next line we are getting this relationship. In the here in this position just taking that LCM of these two denominators. So this is 1 by 1 minus x1 whole square is the LCM. So here it should be it, it definitely x1. But here it should be 1 minus x1. Then this x1 is cancelled by this x1. So it becomes 1 by 1 minus x1 whole square. This 1 by 1 minus x1 is cancelled by this 1 minus x1. So only 1 minus x1 remains here in the denominator. So you get 1 over x1 into 1 minus x1, isn't it? So in the next time, just uh, the step jumping not done here. I have written the intermediate step here and this is the final result. So 1 by x1 into 1 minus x1. So this is positive or negative? Definitely this is a positive term. That means delta G is minimum, isn't it? This is positive term. Therefore, delta G will be minimum at x1 is to x2 equals to 1 is to 1. Same way. And what should be the graphical presentation? This is the graphical presentation. Here, at 1 is to 1 ratio, it is getting, getting the minimum value. It is reaching its minima. Okay. So, that's all for today. Have a nice day. Thank you.